I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're going to do an Inkscape tutorial. It's going to be a beginner, beginner, intermediate level, and it comes from a couple of requests. One specifically, a request to do a forest scene. I thought that was a good idea, so we'll do this number right here. And the other request I've been getting, I appreciate, is asking to highlight specific tools. So this for actually this one over here, this number is from a previous tutorial, and I did use the spray tool to make these hills, but I want to go into more detail specifically if you want to recreate this number right here. So if you're going to play along, let's begin. Grab the Create Squares and Rectangles tool and draw out a rectangle roughly the size and scale that you want to work on for your project. We're going to build off of this and eventually clip it at the end to the size that we want. But for now, let's just get that started. We'll change it. This is the fill and stroke menu here. If you don't have it, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. I'm going to go very neutral. I'm on color wheel, just something in the grays so I can see it against the workspace. And now let's go over the spray tool. So spray tool is down here. It's very powerful. It's gonna allow us to take an object and then spray it almost like it's a painter's knife in this case. So let's first start by drawing out one branch of a tree in the forest. Grab the Bezier pen tool and this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to scale this down, but just get something on there it looks like a branch. Let's change this color to green for our pine tree, something maybe darker. This brings us to our first tip, a beginner tip here. I'm gonna make the illusion of pine needles on this branch. It's gonna scale down so much, it may not matter, but just for the detail. So I've got the first object selected. I go back to the Bezier pen, I'll be on regular path. And what I'm gonna do is just cut into the first object just to cut out part of it. So once you have your, your second object, now it's hard to tell, it's the same color, so I'll change the color. If you have both of them selected, so here's selector tool, the first one selected, hold shift, get the second one, and then go to path, difference, and that cuts it out. It looks like a palm tree. It's not gonna matter once we have it all scaled down. Now you can run with this just as it is and use it with the spray tool to get the effect, but I'm gonna add one more detail here. With the object selected, do control D, that duplicates it. And let's change that one slightly brighter. I'm gonna up arrow. And all I did was create a little depth and contrast. Being quick and a little messy is okay. That's the way creativity is, but I can't have the front and the back detached. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom one, edit paths by node, and then that lets me pull the nodes together. Once you have it the way you like it, hold shift and create a box around both of the objects and control G We'll group it together. All right, now we can use the spray tool and I'll show you the settings to make it work. First, let's go into some open space. I'm gonna keep the original branch as a reference. Let's control D, duplicate it, and scale this one way down and zoom in. All right, let's do a practice spray first so I can show you the settings. I've got the object selected. I click on the spray can. For mode, you wanna be on the third one from the left, which is spray objects in a single path. For width five, amount 10, that's how many it's gonna spray out per click. Rotation eight, that varies the uh, direction a little bit. Scale 30, that varies the size. Scatter five, focus zero. So the object selected, I'm on the spray can, I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button. And it sprays it out. It'll spray out any direction that you drag it, it's gonna go. So you could just make trees or in this case, a mess pretty easily. So let's control Z, control Z, clean it up. Okay, let's make our tree. I'm gonna start with a thin line for a tree trunk, just as a reference that we can hang the branches on. So to do that, I'll get the calligraphic tool. I'm on dip pen with one, thinning 30, tremor 10. Just draw a straight line down. <laughs> There's our tree trunk. It's the wrong color, so let's go with something brown. Probably won't see much of it, but it's a good reference point. I think for speed, I'm going to make a couple different sizes of my branches. So control D, some larger branches for the bottom, control D, maybe some smaller branches for the top. And while we're at it, might as well do the other side of the tree as well. So control D, these are directional. So I'll flip the direction, control D, flip the direction. Let's spray them on. So collect this one right here. I'll go to spray can. I'm just gonna drag it up. Try the other side. Move on to the mid-size branch.
Then you look at your tree and see what branches don't belong. What is unnatural? That shouldn't be there. Some of these can come out. Let's group this whole thing. Control G groups it all together. Maybe give it a squeeze. Control D, duplicate. So I can now use this and spray this object. And just like with the branches, I can make variations for my spray. So this will be a skinny one. And this will be a super tall one that is reverse direction. Now let's build our composition here. So I've got the tree I want to use selected. I'm on the spray can. Same settings as before. The only change is I took the rotation down to zero because I don't want to have any slanting trees here. So I'm going to go down to the bottom. Just hold the left mouse button down and spray some trees. Try some of these. Now, if you feel compelled, you don't want to spray. You can always just grab it and do control D and place it in. For instance, I'll put this one here as my featured tree and that will do it for the foreground. So I'm going to group all of these green trees, control G. And now I can cheat by doing control D to duplicate it and then reverse it. Let's move the reversed version into some open space. And since I can tell Inkscape is kind of using a little bit more muscle than normal, I don't know if it's my screen recorder, I'm gonna remove some of the trees to get rid of some of the computing power required. Okay, we'll see if that helps. So now I have to regroup this part, Control G. And here's a way we can make this set of trees look a lot different from this front one without doing much. So I've got it all selected. I'll go to Filters, Color, Simple Blend, and this will bring up a color wheel here. Now I've got it set to Screen. These are all different options you can use, but Screen is going to keep it so I have my contrast change. It'll just affect the overall color. So in this case, I've got it set to a gray, which will kind of mute the colors a bit. I'll go to Live Preview, and <laughs> it's okay. A little lighter gray looks a bit better if you're not seeing it render, unclick Live Preview and then click Live Preview again, and it should show you what it will look like. When you're happy with it, just push Apply. I think I'll stretch it out, mostly so I can grab it for later. I'm gonna add in some fog, but let's move it into place. The hierarchy's gonna be off. So the first thing I'll do is lower it one step. All right about there is good. Now I'm gonna add some fog in the front. So I've done this effect in the past, but to give you the quick version, we're gonna do a watercolor effect. So I'll start with an oval. It's set to the gray of the backdrop, which is fine. I'll go to filters, texture, watercolor. And let's zoom in. Actually, I'll just change the color so you can see it. So this is the watercolor effect you're going to change the way it looks originally with the blur here. So if I take the blur all the way off, you can see my oval is there with the pattern, the texture pattern that Inkscape gives us. So I'll add some blur. If you want to really dive into the different settings for watercolor, I have some previous tutorials on my channel that'll get into it. But for this one, I'm going to move past that. If you need to modify it more, just play with the opacity and blur until you see something on there. Now in this case, I'll show you one other thing. If you touch the X, you can move it around. And when you get it the way you like it, like right, let's say, I want some legs on it. Okay, so I like it the way it looks there. Go to Selector Tool, resize it, and that's gonna lock it in. So now when you move it, it won't keep changing and otherwise it'll modify it and you might lose what uh, you're going for. So now I can make it back to white and here's my fog. I'll do control D to make my fog thicker. And that's my fog layer on top of the foreground. So I think I'll do one in between. Actually, I won't do watercolor. If you don't feel like doing watercolor, you can still do it with just a regular oval. Give it some gray and we'll just do a regular old blur. So first get the opacity back. So you see where it is. I want it to drop below the foreground. So I'll do hierarchy. I'll throw it to the bottom all the way. And then I'll raise it up until it's in front of this, uh, the secondary level of trees. Okay, so it's in front. Now I can change the opacity, make that white and then blur. Off camera, I tweaked the back row, made a couple modifications to the fog. I just wanted to make the composition look more full. And now I'll make the third row 
with the lightest trees in the far background. So to do that, I'll grab one of these, Control D. I'm not gonna do the spray tool this time, I'll be more precise. I just want three of them, so Control D. One here, maybe make this one fatter, something like that. I'll group all of them, Control G. And for this, I'm gonna go very, very light on opacity, because I want it to just be the hint of the tree behind there. Maybe down to four, that's too light. Five, seven, let's try seven. Let's sneak this over. Right there looks good. Before we go, I'll duplicate that. Reverse it. And I'll put it on this side. I think it's affecting the opacity. I think I have to drop it down to the bottom. So let's go to the bottom for hierarchy, then raise it up one. And that is our forest. Hopefully someplace cooler than the 85 degrees it is tonight here. And I was gonna change the background here to some yellow, but I don't feel like it. So let's just raise this up. We'll stamp it out. To do that, let's zoom out a bit. You wanna grab way out into no man's land. If you have something you don't wanna group, you can hold shift and unclick those pieces. And <laughs> this doesn't wanna ungroup. It's gonna get sacrificed. Control G, we'll group our whole project together. Okay, from here I can grab a rectangle tool. I'm going to draw out a box that we will use for a clipping box. Make its color so we can see it. This is to stamp out the final project in whatever proportion, ratio, size, scale that you like. Right there is good. With the clipping box selected, hold shift, get everything else, object, clip, set. And there we have it. There is our forest spray tool Inkscape tutorial completed. I probably should have filled in some more under there, but that's okay because this is all practice. So good luck, have fun with it. If you have any questions or suggestions you'd like to see in future videos, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.